is Isaiah 58. You know, that's a beautiful chapter. Verse 6, and it says, Is this not the fast that I have chosen, to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? Well, Pete and Tom were best friends. And one afternoon, they lived close to each other too, which was really handy. After school, they said, hey, let's go down to the park. He said, Pete said, I have something to show you. It's really mysterious and it's in the park. Tom said, really, what is it? No, I'm not gonna tell you, just come with me. So they started walking and they walked and walked. They had to walk several blocks this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. I got to this beautiful park in the center of town. It really was a beautiful park. In fact, they kept the grounds up really nice. They kept the lawns mowed and flowers and bushes. It was beautiful. And they had a big, tall fence all around it and a gate. It was a fancy park, all right. And Pete said, come on, Tom, come here. And they walked in the park and walked down this way, this way, this way. And they went over and there was a big a hole, but it had a grate on it. You know, it was um, a rain hole, like when it would rain and rain and the rain could go in there and then down and out instead of just flooding everything. And he said, okay, now <clears throat> what I want you to do is I want you to just put your head right down here and just listen and just wait here. Don't go anywhere and just wait. And I'll be back. <clears throat> Tom said, okay. So he was just listening, looking down. He could see it was down, you know, quite a ways. And there was some water down there. And, and he was just listening and listening and looking. And Pete took off. And he went quite a ways away. And Tom was listening and listening. All of a sudden, Tom heard, Hello! An echo. He heard it coming from the hole. And he said, Pete, is that you? And he said, yes, it's me. It was an echo. And Tom said, how did you do that? Are you down there? Are you down in that hole? He said, it's a mystery, a big mystery. Well, Tom and Pete had so much fun because Pete had found another hole way down around and he could call down and it would echo through the big chambers and Tom could hear it. So Tom would talk and call, yeah, so where are you? And it would echo and Pete would say, I'm quite a ways away. And, and they had so much fun. So then Tom had to go see where Pete's hole was with a grate over it. You know, it was, it was safe. So they couldn't fall into it, but uh, they could talk and it would echo. Their voices would echo. Oh, they were having fun. And they called then, and they would switch holes, and then they would talk to each other, call. They were having so much fun. And they were there for quite a while. And Tom said, this is really a fun game, Pete. I'm glad you, how did you find it? I'm glad you found it though. But you know what? It started getting dark. And Tom said, you know what? We better go. Because, it's, uh, because I think they lock the park at a certain time. And Pete said, yeah, we probably should. Besides, he said, Pete said, I'm getting hungry. Tom said, me too. So they start hiking out to the main gate. He went to the main gate and guess what? It was locked. It was locked. They lock it at a certain time every night. I think it was seven o'clock, they lock it. And the boys are there later. They, someone had announced, we're closing the park. We're locking up. 
and the boys didn't hear it because they were having too much fun calling down these uh, deep, deep uh, wells like. And they said, they shook the gate. It was locked and it was tall. There was no way they could climb over. And they looked at all the tall uh, walls, the fence all the way around. It was wrought iron. It was tall. There was no way they could climb out. Pete said, uh, wait, we're not in trouble yet. There's a back gate. Let's go see that. That They probably leave that open later. So they, oh, okay, great. So they start running through the park, running, 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 running. And they walked up the back gate. It was locked too. And they said, what are we going to do? And then Tom said, well, I know my dad said that someone was locked into this park and they were put in jail for it. And Pete said, ah, they wouldn't put us in jail. We didn't mean any harm. We didn't know they were closing so soon. And, and we don't even have watches. And and they were thinking and thinking. And then they were starting to get cold. It started getting darker. And they were hungry. And they didn't have cell phones. And their parents didn't know where they were. And they were walking around. And they kept looking and looking at these this tall um, fence, and he thought, do you think we'd climb over that? Oh, no, 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 because it was tall, and then it was pointed at the top. They kept walking around and around. They were in real trouble. But you know what? They knew the one who can solve problems. Do you know who that is? Yes, Jesus. So they were praying. They thought, Jesus, we're in real trouble. We're so sorry. How can we get out? And they kept walking around and <clears throat> they kept thinking, well, what could they do? Well, I guess they could just go and <clears throat> sit down under a bush and just sit here and wait all night. And they would surely open the park in the morning and then they could go home. But boy, they thought that would, did not sound fun to them. Would you like to spend the night in a park when it was cold and you were hungry? I wouldn't. So they kept walking around, well, what should we do? And <clears throat> Pete said, I know, let's go close to the fence where there's a road and when a car comes by, we'll shout and we'll scream real loud, help, help. Tom said, oh, I don't think that's a good idea. Pete said, well, we've got to get someone's attention or because how could we stay here all night? Tom says, yeah, besides, we don't even know if there are animals in this park that are dangerous. And Pete said, yeah, I know. <clears throat> well, I think we should just yell. When a car goes by, just yell real loud. Help! Help! Hey! And maybe we jump up and down. Tom said, I don't think that's a good idea. Well, they're walking along, walking along. All of a sudden, a bright light shone in their faces. And they couldn't see anything because this bright light was in their face. And a voice said, so what are you guys doing in there? Pete said, uh, uh, well, we didn't know what time it was and we uh, got locked in the park. He said, well, you're not supposed to be in there. Tom said, y yes, we know. It was a police. And they thought, oh boy, Tom said, we're going to jail for sure now. And he said, with his big light on and a megaphone, he says, Go to the front gate, and I'll go and try and find someone with a key to let you out. He said, oh, okay, okay. And the police left, and they started running down the pretty little sidewalks to the front gate. And Tom said, oh, we are in so much trouble. I know he's going to take us to jail. And Pete said, he won't take a couple kids to jail. So my dad said they took a man to jail because he was locked in the park. I know we're going to go to jail. And Pete said, oh, I don't think so at all. So they waited at the front gate. They waited and waited and waited. After a while, a police car drove up and another car behind him. The police had gotten the man that was in charge of the park. And he got out and walked over there with big keys. He says, so what are you boys doing in the park? Don't you know it's closed? He says, yeah, yeah, we, we didn't hear any announcements and we didn't have a watch and... and and, and then the gate men started laughing. He says, well, maybe you've learned your lesson. He unlocked the gate and the boys walked out of the gate. 
They were so happy. Oh. And then the police said, uh, boys, come get in my car. And Tom said, Stop, Pete, I told you. He's taking us to jail now. Pete said, no, he's not. Yes, he is. So they obeyed the police. The police opened the back door and they got in the police car. But the police car was warm. They were so happy it was warm because they were cold by now. Cold and hungry. And the police started driving off. And the police said, he's taking us to jail. And the police said, no, he's not. He says, yes, he's taking us to jail. I know he's taking us to jail right now. Here we go in a police car. Then the police turned to them and said, so, where do you boys live? I'll take you home. And Pete nudged Tom. He's taking us home. He's not taking us to jail. And Pete said, oh, I live at 26 Cherry Avenue. And Tom said, and I live just a couple doors from there. He said, okay. So he turned the car and driving, driving, driving. They had never been in a police car before. And they looked at the door. And did you know the back seat of the police cars have no handles? No handles. You can't get out unless they let you out. No handles, just a door. And of course, a window, but you can't open the window. And Tom said, look, there's no handles on the inside of the police car. And that made them a little uneasy. And there was a glass between the police, the front seat and the back seat. The boys rode on. And finally, he came driving up and the police said, so is your house real close here? Tom said, yes, yes, that's my house right there. So he stopped and he got out and he said, so Pete, where's your house? Oh, it's just down the way. I can get out here. And they got out and they thanked the policeman for helping them out. And the policeman said, no worries. Have a good evening. And I'm telling you, they had a story for their parents that night. They were trapped in a park and God opened the gate and let them walk right out. Isn't that a nice story? How they got out? Yes, God gets us out of our troubles too. He can, if you have a problem, just pray and pray and pray. And God, just like it said, to let the oppressed go free and that you break every yoke. Okay, let's pray. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for helping us out of our problems. We get ourselves into problems. Lord, sometimes we don't watch the, the clock and we don't see what time it is. And, and uh, we make mistakes and you help us out. Forgive us of our sins. Thank you for always being with us and helping us. We love you. For Jesus' sake, amen. Remember, Jesus loves you and he wants you more than anything. Okay? Bye. Thank you.